Movies depicting the life of Jesus are not new. They have existed since the era of silent cinema. However, of all of them, none seems as real and shocking as The Passion of the Christ, a film produced by the American director Mel Gibson in the year 2004. It portrays the last 12 hours of Jesus' life here on earth, from the moment he prays in the Garden of Gethsemane to his death on the cross, including Judas's betrayal, the trial, the scourging, and the journey to Golgotha. This film was so impactful on the lives of those who watched it that many claim to have decided to dedicate their lives to Jesus after seeing it. I myself know brothers and sisters who decided to return to the Lord's ways after witnessing the story of the Son of God as told by Mel Gibson in the cinema. So, in this video, I'm going to show you five very curious, interesting, and even supernatural facts about the movie The Passion of the Christ. But before we begin, I want to ask you to subscribe to my channel here. Just click on the button below the video, subscribe, and next to it, a bell icon will appear. It's very important that you click on that bell and select the option All, so that you don't miss out on any of the videos I post here, okay? I want to help you in your journey with God, so come along with me. The first fact is that Mel Gibson emphasized the sacrifice of Christ for us. The greatest difference of the movie, The Passion of the Christ, compared to other films depicting the life of Jesus, is undoubtedly its realism. The violence with which the Son of God is assaulted by human soldiers is brutal and shocking. So much so that there are thousands of reports of people leaving the cinema before the movie ends because they couldn't bear to watch those scenes. In some countries, for example, the film was censored, and in others, it could only be viewed by those over 18 years old. However, unlike what happens in the vast majority of movies, all that violence is not gratuitous. The director wanted to show us that every sin of humanity, no matter how small, was to the Lord like a lash, a thorn from the crown, or a hammer blow on the nails that pierced said Jesus' body on the cross. But the story of the film is not one of hate, but of love, and Mel Gibson made sure to show us that as well, by portraying Jesus asking the Father to forgive those men who were hurting him. Additionally, various significant scenes from Christ's ministry are depicted, such as parts of the Last Supper, the trial of Mary Magdalene, and the Sermon on the Mount, where Jesus said we should love our enemies. The second fact is the choice of the actor to portray Jesus. One day, Mel Gibson contacted Jim Caviezel and asked if he would like to portray the Son of God in his film. The actor was surprised by the invitation because his agents were unaware of this possibility, and Mel Gibson and he had never spoken before. If that surprise weren't enough, it would be even more interesting that Jim Caviezel was at the time 33 years old, the age at which Jesus was crucified. Coincidence? Mel Gibson doesn't believe. So, and even mentioned a phrase spoken by Jesus himself, recorded in John chapter 13, which goes like this. You do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. And today we see that Mel Gibson was right. It wasn't him who chose that actor for his film, but certainly the Holy Spirit of God. Now let's move on to the third fact. The film, The Passion of the Christ, converted actors. After the film was shot and released in theaters, most of the actors who participated in the production of The Passion of the Christ declared that their lives were transformed and that God had touched their hearts in a very special way. However, one of the most impacted by the power of Christ, curiously, was the person who played one of the worst roles in history, that of Barabbas. Pietro Sarubi is an Italian actor who didn't care much about his religiosity and wasn't exactly a Christian role model. When he learned that he had been invited to a role in the film directed by Mel Gibson, he imagined it to be an action movie. Upon finding out it was about the life of Jesus, specifically his last moments before the crucifixion, he hoped to play one of the disciples, not necessarily because of the character's challenge, but because the paycheck would be higher. But contrary to what he thought, Mel Gibson offered him the role of Barabbas, a notorious murderer and madman who tormented the region of Jerusalem. That seemed like a small role, but it had great significance for Pietro. Barabbas appears in a single scene, the classic Bible passage where Pontius Pilate asks the Jews to choose between freeing Jesus or Barabbas. 
And as we know, the people are influenced by the devil to choose the release of Barabbas. In that scene, when he is set free, the actor crosses his gaze with his scene partner who portrayed Jesus. And when he looked into his eyes, Pietro's life changed forever. Because, as he recounts, at that moment he felt the presence of Jesus himself. It was a gaze of tenderness, despite being very wounded, a gaze that held no anger or resentment, only mercy and love. Since that day, Pietro Sarubi said he was born again and even released a book titled Barabbas Converted by a Gaze from Jesus. In the book, Pietro details how his life changed after that scene in The Passion of the Christ and how his faith in the Lord has guided his life since that day. Furthermore, he says, Barabbas is the sinful man whom Jesus saved from the cross. And in truth, he represents all of humanity that was substituted by Christ there on the cross. The fourth fact is the calling of the man who portrayed Jesus. As we've seen, the passion of the Christ is marked by numerous scenes of extreme violence, and anyone who thinks it was all staged is mistaken. Many times, actor Jim Caviezel was genuinely injured during the filming. Throughout the shooting, he dislocated his shoulder, had the cross fall on his head, and experienced very strong pains. One of the whippings received by a Roman soldier even caused a 35-centimeter cut on his back. Additionally, he lost almost 15 kilograms, became ill, suffered from pneumonia, hypothermia, migraines, had difficulty breathing, and in the final scenes, his body was struck by lightning. Yes, lightning. The medical team even warned Mel Gibson that the situation was very concerning and that Jim could die. So Mel Gibson decided to stop the filming, but Jim Caviezel refused and said that everything that was happening was between him and God, and that if he had to die to finish that film, it would not have been in vain, because nothing would be better for him than to give his life so that the name of Christ would be brought to the masses and glorified. The actor felt that it was necessary to go through all of that to deliver the best performance, as if he were having the opportunity to feel a little of what Christ suffered and to convey that to people. He also knew that Satan was trying to prevent the filming from continuing because he knew that the film would have a great impact on the world. In short, Jim Caviezel had realized that The Passion of the Christ was no longer just a movie in his career. It was, in fact, his calling. To make the film, the actor learned to speak Aramaic, Latin, and Hebrew. And after the film, he began to give lectures spreading the word of God to many people. In one of his interviews, he commented on the issue of the film's violence. Here's what he said. What's incredible is that everyone wants the resurrection, but no one wants the suffering. Yet, can one obtain a gold medal without suffering? When the athlete has the gold medal on their chest, watching their country's flag being raised, they cry because they remember the sacrifice it took to get there, their pains, their family, their people, and they understand that it was all worth it. The actor who portrayed Jesus Christ in the cinema also said that we should not only condemn the Roman Empire whose guards tortured Jesus, but we should remember that Christ was denied by his own people. And it's precisely this reflection that I would like you, my dear brothers and sisters, to consider now. How many times have we betrayed or denied Christ? We sin and betray him even as Christians, but Jesus continues to encourage us to rise up, try again, and never give up. That's the grace and mercy he offers us every day. Amen. The fifth fact is that the second part of the film will be released. In recent interviews, director Mel Gibson confirmed that he is already producing the sequel to The Passion of the Christ, which will be called The Resurrection. This new production will bring closure to the cycle of the message, which is the victory of Christ over death. There aren't many details about this new film yet, but even without the violent scenes, I don't believe it will be any less impactful. After all, we're talking about the life and resurrection of Christ, the Son of God. So, brothers and sisters, the passion of the Christ does indeed contain very intense scenes, and I completely understand those who couldn't watch it until the end. However, I still believe that it's a very necessary film for everyone who believes in what the Bible says about Jesus. He died for us, my brothers and sisters, and the truth is that it was in a cruel and slow manner, as the film shows. 
So, watching the Passion of the Christ makes us even more grateful as we recognize how much God loves us, is merciful, and decided to give His Son to die on the cross so that we wouldn't be punished. And that's why the Bible says, God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through Him. Whoever believes in Him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. If you enjoyed this message, I ask you to share it with your friends and family. I've also included two videos on the screen for you to watch. Take a look, because you'll enjoy them and they'll edify you greatly, okay? I'll be waiting for you in the next video. God bless you.